You will be chipped, it's just a matter of time. That's what analysts and educators tell us, but don't worry, what happened in Wisconsin is not about to go mass market yet. A small firm recently embedded microchips in their employees as a way to bypass company badges and corporate logons and to get attention for their cafeteria kiosks, which are available on a cashless payment plan like Apple Pay. Chip proponents tell us that having a chip in the hand is better than grabbing for the cell phone because you can never forget it and you can't lose it and you have the capability to communicate with machines in a way we couldn't before. Others just think that having a corporation stick a chip in this hand is kind of creepy, even if the companies say that it can track you and that your information is private. For me, it's a no, mostly because I'm concerned about what kind of health effects it might have. For those reasons, analysts we spoke to say that workers at IBM, Facebook, Federal Express, Microsoft, The Gap, and so many other corporate giants have nothing to worry about. They won't get chips soon. Consumers first, corporations second, which is why the analysts say, it's going to be a while, but you will be chipped. Progress, right? For USA Day in Los Angeles, I'm Jefferson Graham. Yeah, I like a little blue butterflies. Welcome, everybody. Welcome to big up, big up, big up, big up. Wow, eh? Today? Big up. Mm -hmm. oh, we're here. Oh my goodness. We're here. We're here. I we're here. Big yeah, up I know. Yes. That, big like, up. It's been a day, guys. But guess what? Um, we're gonna come at you right away, hard. We have to. We have to start with this. Let's go ahead and do it, man. Are we this way now? Yes, we're right here. Okay. Let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to Better Tomorrow with my co-host, the one Dave Rankin, alongside the Donette. Some more Jennifer Smith. So I'm going to try to be a little bit more serious today because my parents always give me the same critique. You guys laugh too much, especially you. No, Simone. no, no. You laugh too much. But I have to find a way to deliver. Sometimes this information's heavy. Like, look at what we just watched. So let, let's get to this let's, first let's story. Get, let's get through quickly, the information. Okay? Yes. So UK residents, this is something you guys should know about, but I think the whole world should know about <clears> this. Um, starting January 1st, they will be required to wear a microchip under their skin. Hmm. Okay? Hmm. Now, I have some questions. So, there's a light side to it. What if you could open or unlock your car door by just raising your head? Like, that's not bad. It's a good, it's an advantage. It's a pro. Right? You're not worrying about keys. You can just, do car start up. Okay. Okay? Okay. Um, how about sending your LinkedIn profile uh, to a friend? Just you off your just hand. Like, yeah. Just by squeezing your, your forehead? I don't know how your, you would do web? it. I don't know. Like, I'm just saying, these are questions that, of, of the capability of things. Okay. Uh, what about turning on coffee by just pointing at it? Okay. All right. Okay. This is the future. This is what's happening right now. Hmm. So there's an article in Medical Fut Futurists that talks about radio frequency identification data, or RFID. And these are like wannabe cyborgs that they actually are putting into people's skin. So thousands of people have actually been implanted with this tiny device, um, which allows them to access buildings, just like those employees that you saw. So the radio frequency identification technology has been around for decades. It, it's not new. This has been around for a while. Yeah. And it's a tag, a label, or a card that can exchange data with a reader using radio frequency signals. It usually has like a built-in antenna um, and an integrated circuit. Yeah, they would call it the mark of the beast. Remember, they've been pointing this stuff in whales and animals for so yes. long for tracking them. And look at that. Look at how small that is. That in mm -hmm. your in your arm. Okay, so mm -hmm. the RFID chip is very similar to like a barcode. So you know when you go to the store and you beep, that's what it is. 
So people are beepable now. I shouldn't be laughing about this. Okay, serious face. People are beeping now. Mm -hmm. We can be beeped now. Okay? Mm -hmm. So the first ever human to actually receive an F a RFID microchip implant was a British scientist named Kevin Warwick. He actually is nicknamed the Captain Captain Cyborg. Hmm. This was in 1988. I think we have a picture of him, Captain Cyborg. He looks kind of creepy. Like, look at him. He looks like the Mark of the Beast. Let's be real. So the experiment allowed a computer to monitor Warwick as he moved through the halls and offices of the Department of Cybernetics at the University of Reading using a unique identifying signal emitted by that chip hmm. that was attached to the cyborg arm that he had. So he could operate doors, lights, heaters, and other computers without even, just, just have to lift a finger. That's, that's our future. So here's where it involves you guys. I wanted to give you a little bit of background on what an RFID chip was. Right. So the United Kingdom has notified the residents of a plan to enforce wearing RFID market chip within a, which comes into effect. There's this letter right now. I hope you guys, honestly, as I'm speaking about it, kind of just do a quick review. If you want to pause, blow up your screen a little bit, read this letter, okay? So this was said in an open letter to the citizens by Boris Johnson, the UK Prime Minister, dated on June 9th, okay? Boris alerted the citizens of the new government policy in which they are proposing that the UK residents be required to wear RFID microchips starting January 1st, 2021. So that's in months. Wow. Okay. Wow. He asked that the UK residents will be able to get, or he actually told the UK residents that they'll be able to get a free implant at their local NHS. It's a minor surgery, right? Just again, they cut you and slid, and slid it in. So the Prime Minister said his words, it is important that the government of UK does all it can to protect its citizens. This is the rhetoric that's going with this chip, okay? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. In the world faced with terrorism, crime, and cyber fraud, the RFID microchip, they say, will enable the law enforcement agency to track the movement of criminals and terrorists. So I have a question. If they can track criminals and terrorists, who says they can't track us? <laughs> if we have it. And what are they tracking? These are all questions you guys should have in mind. So he asked the UK citizens to write to their local parliament members to voice their actual opinion on the policy. So I want to open this up to anyone in the UK because I will be sharing this video with them. Mm -hmm. Open up your mouth. Talk about this. This is happening to you guys before it's happening to us. Mind you, there's going to be some stuff happening to us. But again, Look out for that. Toronto Community Newspaper next edition will be talking about what's going to be coming to Canada. So it's going to become a reality for us too, just in a little bit of a different way. But it's progressing all in the same way. You know, these things remind me of, um, of course, what Dr. Neely, Neely Fuller had said to us a while back in regards to the four stages of white supremacy racism. E-M-E-R, as in the four, four letters in emergency. E as an establishment, M as maintenance, E as an expansion, and then R, which is the most deadly, which is refinement. Right. What stage is this? This is refinement. This is refinement. This is refinement stage, right? Terrible. Where they go ahead and actually re to refine something or to reform something, right? Is to change the language to where we now become so accepting, right? And this is exactly what is taking place. Rhetoric. Lord have mercy. Yes. So first thing, what's happening in China? <laughs> Because there's always something happening there. Well, it's not necessarily in China, but however, the, the Africa-China relationships, right? Mm. So um, in an article that I read recently, that China will now forgive some interest-free loans to Africa, right? Um, Beijing, in, in fact, uh, I'll just read verbatim regarding the article. Beijing will write off all the interest-free loans advanced to African countries that are due this year. Chinese mm. president, uh, I'm not even going to go ahead and butcher this man's name, but the Chinese president just said it, right? He said that under the framework of the 2018 Forum on China-Africa sorry, China-Africa cooperation, China will forgive the interest-free loans of relevant African countries due to China by the end of 2020. He also mm. urged Chinese financial institutions such as Export-Import Bank of China and the China Development Bank to conduct consultations with African countries on commercial sovereign loan arrangements. Now, here's the thing with this. Now, we all understand, right, guys, of course, you know, by China, China go ahead and throw, flaunting their money, yes. right, in Africa, right? And a lot of us have been appalled in regards to what's taking place. Right, right. Right. 
um, the interest-free loans which are now being forgiven doesn't mean, of course, that they're, they're, isn't, they're not going to be paid back. It just means, of course, that they're not receiving any payments at this time. Okay. Right? They're not absolving them completely. So they're just not taking anything right now. Exactly. Okay. Right? Mind you, you know what? They have went in and absolved some loans in, in, in the past. Um, further on in the, in the article, it says that observers say that while Beijing, Beijing has in the past written off most interest-free loans extended to African nations, they accounted for less than 5% of Africa's total financial debt to China. Right? And here are some numbers. Right? In 2018, China canceled U.S. Um, these are U.S. dollar amounts, by the way. Okay. 78 million owed to owed by Cameroon, 7.2 million um, to Botswana, right? 10.6 million owned by Lesotho, right? And as well as the previous year, it canceled 160 million owed by Sudan. Okay. Right. So I mean, they're in the process. They have done this before, but uh, again, right? There's nothing ever done for free. <laughs> Right. There's always something that comes along. Mm. Right. So by means, um, the only thing we can ask right now is that, of course, our African brothers and sisters to please read the fine print, because, you know, it's something major will come. Right. And more importantly, you know, who knows exactly what they will go ahead and take from us, what more they want to go ahead and want from us in the process. All right. So chips and money. That's our combo for this segment. When we come back. And of course, before I even say anything, before we leave this segment, I want to say this. This platform is for our viewers. We want to hear from you. A lot of the stories we got today, it's because people have been reaching out to us with things that concern them so that we can tell the larger community, we have the news. Don't let the media companies feed us news. We have the news. We have the stories. We have the real stories. So share them with us so we can share them with the world. That's right. Don't forget to like, comment, and share. And when we come back, what do we have for you guys? What else has people share with me this, this week? Oh, of course, we got to talk about Aunt Jemima <laughs> and Uncle Ben and the cream of wheats guy. Oh, boy. Yeah, that'll be interesting. We'll see you guys soon on A Better Tomorrow. I'm starting to like I'm starting to get less anxious about I guess Dave is the fact that uh, this is news these things are happening things are always going to be happening things are not going to be perfect it's just it is what it is it is what it is <laughs> okay, roll is, with the punches yeah all right so I'm going to be showing you guys a quick video but before I show it actually I'm glad that we stopped before I showed it because uh, as of recent as of this week there's been some large companies doing some big moves okay uh, I, I, I do want to look at these moves, though, and I want to take it back a little bit because um, when I see people speaking about how, you know what, let me not go into it. Let me just read their words. So let's take it back to the video. Two quiet people, Cotton Watts and Chick. Well, <laughs> Let that be a lesson to you. What's the matter with you boys shooting up that man's hen house? I'll shoot any chicken trying to follow me home. Well, why don't you get a job and go to work? Y'all almost had me a job this morning. 
Where? I went down to the post office and that, that man couldn't let me have one of them jobs as a letter toter. No, Cotton, you mean a mail carrier. And the man said, boy, well, you give me a situation, you'd have to put me through a simple service examination. No, stupid. You mean a civil service examination. Well, the man carried me in a little room and set me down and started asking me a gang of questions. Well, what did he ask you? First thing the man asked me, say, how far is it from the sun to the moon? He asked you how far it was from the sun to the moon? Yeah, that's what the man asked me. Well, what'd you tell him? I told him he was going to give me that route. I didn't want to do. Well, tell him, how would you like to go to work for me? Yes, ma'am. How much you going to pay me, I hope? Well, let's see now. Mm -hmm. I'll pay you all your work. No, ma'am. I got to have some money. You know, Cotton, I'm making a picture call. So I think that video is very relevant. I actually saved this, <coughs> this segment just for this. You have all next segment. I really wanted to talk about this because we have some things we're going to kind of flush through, mm -hmm. but I want to go through the facts first because as much as you and I have our thoughts and perspectives, we still have to present some news. So mm -hmm. uh, say goodbye to Aunt Jemima and Uncle Ben. Okay, this has been the thing this week. Everybody's talking about it, right? Mm -hmm. Everyone has their opinions on mm -hmm. it. Everyone, some people think it's good, some think people think it's bad. Mm -hmm. We're just gonna offer some perspective and some facts and I want people to think. I showed that video for a reason because that has been around for years. Yeah, the vaudeville. And the, right? Yeah. That stuff has been around for years. So PepsiCo, uh, actually, are you able to pull up what websites? Actually, you know what? We didn't put them in, so it's okay. Don't worry about okay. it. We'll, we'll save Don't you the trouble. It. So Dave didn't put them in. So I would actually <laughs> had some websites showing the shares for these companies, mm -hmm. but it's okay. I will actually maybe share them in the comments later so that people can see those. So I'll do that for you guys. Actually, so you know, while you're going, I'll, I'll pull them up so we can go and read them in real okay, time. Okay, so they announced on Wednesday that they will be removing the image of Aunt Jemima from its packaging and change the name of the brand, acknowledging its racist origin. So I want to I want to say I want to repeat that last part, acknowledging its racist origin. Mm -hmm. Okay, you know how long these people have been around for? All right. <laughs> for 131 years, and did you hear how many years that is? And they're just acknowledging that it's racist. Okay, now, 131 years, Aunt Jemima syrup and pancake mix have been breakfast staples in Americans' homes, and I mean all people. Not they, you notice they said Americans? They didn't specify because everyone uses Aunt Jemima. They're exactly. making some money off this, right? Yes. But behind the smiling face featured prominently on these products, of course, there's some, there's some, um, there's some details on Aunt Jemima that people don't know too. The fact that she was, actually, I was told today she was filthy rich. Continue with the story. Okay, yes. we'll get there? Okay. C continue okay. with the story. So, Quaker Foods, North America stopped short of using the words racist in its official statement. So I'm gonna read their official statement from Quaker Foods. We recognize Aunt Jemima's origins are based on a racial stereotype. And this is by Kristen Kropf, Kropf, is that my close? I probably said the last name wrong. Who knows? She's the vice president and chief marketing officer for the company. So, we acknowledge the brand has not progressed enough to appropriately reflect the confidence, warmth, and dignity that we would like to stand for today. We are starting by removing the image and changing the name. We will continue the conversation by gathering diverse perspectives from both our organization and the black community to further evolve the brand and make it one everyone can be proud of to have in their pantry. Oh boy. Can I go yet or should I just continue? Just give them, okay, I'll keep going. Just keep going. Okay. On Wednesday afternoon, so everything since Wednesday was a very popular day, boy. Yeah. Miss Butterworth. <laughs> so everyone knows what Miss Butterworth is, right? Oh. Okay. So they announced that it had begun a complete brand and package review. <laughs> oh. oh, my God. <laughs> oh, my goodness. <laughs> and this is a statement according to their parent company, Conagra brands, okay? So here's a statement again. And I want you guys to listen to the words again. So the Miss Butterworth brands, including its syrup package, is intended to evoke the images of a loving grandfather. We stand in solidarity with our black and brown communities, and we can see that our packaging may be 
interpreted in a way that is wholly inconsistent with our values. So now you are, you're going to understand, now you're seeing inconsistencies? Oh. Okay. Oh my gosh. You know who else? On Wednesday, <laughs> the popular day of this week, I don't know, what did I do Wednesday? I have to check and see what I did Wednesday. Probably not as much as these people were doing, okay? We worked, we worked. That's what we did. Uh, Cream of Wheat announced an immediate review of the Cream of Wheat brand pack. Do you, I mean immediate. They have to look at everything from the tippy top, okay? Here's their release, quote. We understand there are concerns regarding the, chief, the chef's image, and we are committed to evaluating our packaging and will provocatively, oh, sorry, proactively take steps to ensure that we and our brands do not inadvertently contribute to systemic racism. I don't know what's happening here. I'll keep going. Oh, wow. So guess who's, uh, we have more. Guess, I have more, you, you Dave. You got more? I have more. Guess who's next? The, everyone's uh, favorite uncle. Uncle, uncle Ben? Uncle Ben Regin. Oh, boy. All right, so. <laughs> In the late 19th century, and I'm, I'm bringing this up for historical purposes, mm -hmm. marketing agencies began to commodify racism and make it profitable. Yes. Okay? Yes. 19th century, guys. That's right. Okay. After slavery ended, the legacy remains in our stores right now. You can go anywhere, all Dalarama, and find Uncle Ben at Jemima pancake mix, all these things, okay? The parent company of Uncle Ben's Rice said it would be evolving the visual brand identity. Evolving. As we listen to the voices of consumers, especially in the black community, and to the voices of our associates worldwide, we recognize that now is the right time to evolve the Uncle Ben's brand, including its visual brand identity, which we will do. And that's by Carolyn Sherman, and she's the Mars spokesman. Oh boy, you know, um, I said this before in a, in a previous segment. For the, anybody who did not go ahead and, and see the previous segment, I will say it again: <laughs> the four stages of white supremacy, racism, E M E R, E for establishment, M for maintenance, E for expansion, R, which is the most deadly, which is refinement. We are refining. They are refining the hell out of this. This is, and it's interesting because. I think the part that stuck out to me the most about this whole um, rebranding thing mm -hmm. is the fact that these companies have been around for years. Centuries. How many black men have been shot and killed in the time that these companies have been open? And now you want to make changes? You know. Um, really? And our people, I love us. Mm hmm you know what? I can see why some people may say this is a progressive move. Right. I, I, I understand it. Right. Because I've done a, l a little bit more digging into this, mm -hmm. a little bit more digging into how media is spun. Mm -hmm. Because of that, I can tell you right now, guys, this is not progress at all. <laughs> well, you know, I mean, to acknowledge something, right, is to apologize for it, right? And which is, of course, getting out in front, right, as a PR move. You should have gone right. out of the front 131 years ago. Right. So, and, and at the same time, I mean, of course, the amount of money they've made during oh. that time frame, right? It doesn't explain in regards to the fact that they can just say, oh, we're sorry, so we're going to go ahead and change this, right? However, though, again, because of the fact that we have yet to organize ourselves in an appropriate manner, right, we cannot go ahead and demand the certain payments that we need to be compensated. I just feel like it's such a slap in the face. Of and course. I think it's like, it's like, and that's just my personal thoughts. This has nothing to do with the news. I'm reading what they said. I realize again, rhetoric, and I keep saying that word. Mm -hmm. that, listen, they know how to spin. They have people who are, who are brilliant at writing things to make you believe what they say. You have to understand, all of this stuff is very well thought out. Nothing is just put out there, guys. You have to understand, we've done media literacy shows. I, I, I beg of you to go back and watch some of those. It's very important for you to understand when these things are happening quietly, we're getting chipped. Go back and look at the last episode about that. All this that's happening, all this chaos, guys, there's some things happening quietly behind. That's what we're missing. That's what we need to be paying attention to. Forget these Band-Aids. Change your... your care about no damn Aunt Jemima changing her, her I don't have nothing to do with me I'm not making any money with, with Aunt Jemima right now they're doing well 
They're killing it right now. Like they're not doing bad. Oh boy. Anyhow, when we come back, I'm gonna I'm out in my feelings now. I had to, I I did. I got in my feelings at the end. I did because I, I just I'm not taking that. It okay. It might be a little bit of progress, but I'm not just. That's not enough. 131 years, guys. Come on now. You can't be continuing to make mistakes that long. All right. When we come back. When we come back. <laughs> why? Because I got in my feelings. We're gonna talk about. Um, Masks are becoming mandatory, they're saying. Mm-hmm. So you're going to start wearing masks, which I want to talk about because I heard people are also getting sick from wearing masks. Hmm. So we'll talk about that. And then what's going on with our kitties? Yeah, this Steven is supposed to be live right now somewhere. Yeah, so this is. Make an announcement. Something's wrong with our kids, guys. We have to pay some attention to this for parents. We'll see you soon on A Better Tomorrow. Back, everybody, welcome back. Mm-hmm. I have Lusa and I've come down. Nice. I'm better now. <laughs> I am better now. All right, so a, a little bit of news on the home front. Um, for those who don't know, uh, Stephen Nietzsche was supposed to go ahead and make an announcement today. Um, I have received some updates, however, though, I definitely want to go into, of course, what we have written here first. So, um, Sick Kids Doctors they expect a safe return to school for Ontario students in the fall, okay. right? Um, they continued on to say to hear that medical experts from Toronto Sick Kids Hospital say that children in Ontario should be able to return to school in September, even though the novel cor- coronavirus that causes COVID-19 likely will not be eradicated by then. Okay. Right? The experts um, say that according to the data, that children are not the super spreaders of the COVID-19, <laughs> right? Which okay. we all know that, of course, you know, in schools... Kids are germy. Yes. They're full of germs. Right? So Ugh. it is what it is. <laughs> right? Um, Dr. Ronald Cohn, who is the president and CEO of Sick Kids, said this in the following. Right? Um, we know that from the flu and from many other respiratory viruses that a child often acts as a super spreader. And that is something that we really have not seen with COVID. None of the students are, sorry, none of the studies are suggesting that children do not transmit it at all. It's just not at the high frequency that any of us would expect it. Okay. Right? So, of course, they're going from this now, the, the actual, um, what the studies have said to sick kids, to now go ahead and launch a, a platinum going forward. Okay. Um, as I mentioned just a while ago, that Ontario Education Minister, Stephen Leachy, he's set to go in and outline the province's plan to have students go back to school. Perfect. Yeah. Okay. Right? Um, I'm going to go ahead and read some of this right now from CBC. Um, let's see now. You found news while we were sitting here? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Go right? ahead. <laughs> so um, at the news conference, uh, he says that a plan for regular in-class instruction will heighten health, with heightened health protocols, the continuation of remote learning with more standardization, okay. right? an adapted delivery model, which blends in-class with online learning, which would see students alternating being in class by days or weeks, which isn't too bad, okay. right? With that respect, in regards to blended learning. Because I say this, now with everything being streamlined to online, mm-hmm. right? of course, with everybody being online, this, the past was it. How long have we been in quarantine, supposedly? About right. four months. Right? We're going to four this months. was oh. the, tent, the test, Okay. right? how it failed, where the hiccups, so on and so forth, mm-hmm. right? So now, of course, you know, what it comes down to, you guys are like, school boards, what kind of money are they getting, mm. right? Which has yet to be outlined. However, though, by means, um, for those of us right now who simply do have, don't want to know a little bit more, right? Tune in somewhere live, 
uh, to whether it's CBC, CTV, or simply just wait till after our broadcast, we'll definitely go ahead and post up a little bit more information yeah, we'll at that point in time. For you. No right? Um, they also said that um, he doesn't expect class sizes to be more than 15 students. Ah. Right? Which is so, I mean. Everything that they were striking for. Right? It, it's just very interesting in regards to how it's everything now is. how you got it. Online learning. Uh huh. Smaller class, smaller than what you requested. <laughs> it's even smaller than that. Right. So I mean, it's it's going to be interesting. I guess like how the details will be rolled out. And more importantly, I mean, everything comes down to dollars and cents, right? What are the school boys going to get in return? Right. Right. Because at the same time, number one, with a lot of teachers have trouble using the platforms which they're already on right now. Yeah. Right. Number two, students do not have the appropriate equipment at home right to foster this education oh my goodness it's a disaster right, right? now. when you have multiple children in a home what do you do and you have one computer what right? do you do exactly right so by means you know there are things that need to be of course you know, outlined and a little bit more streamlined in the process right can i make a quick comment on this Go right ahead. so speaking from personal experience with what we do at here to help um i'm gonna say this to parents out there i feel terrible for you guys because this has not been easy. We work with a few students um, and we have been throughout COVID and our students who we work with on a weekly basis are struggling and are behind. Like, I mean, when I say struggling, I don't mean with the work, it's just with how to do the work. There's no structure at home. Mm -hmm. Some of our parents don't speak English, mm -hmm. right? Some of our parents have no idea even how to use the system. We have some students who will be like, oh yeah, I did my homework and have a month worth of work that they haven't even touched. Right. And now, and that's with us being with them every week and actually staying on top of them, mm -hmm. right? At the end of the day, there's so much we can do, right? But I feel bad for parents. And I have a question that maybe some people can answer for me. Are we really pushing our kids forward a year? Is, is this what's happening? Well, you know, um, I think the no child left behind has struggled, is, is a struggle. Right, and it definitely um, the children, a lot of the children have suffered because of it. There's been no school this year. Right, and so then again. So can push them forward? Right, do, we, do they repeat the school year? Do they not repeat the school year? Do they repeat some of the school year, transition to the next school I mean, it, it's just, it's a mess. That's all I can say right now. Parents, it's on you guys. You have to do something about that. Yeah, definitely. You know, more parents, we need to hear from you guys. Yeah. You know, um, whether you, of course, send it to us so we can go and forward it over to the trustees. Um, go we, to your school trustee board, go to your school board, go to your principals, by means, you know, let them know in regards to ask the challenges. questions. Do not be afraid to ask questions. If you need someone to ask questions for you, leave it in our comments. Mm -hmm. We will direct the questions because mm -hmm. we, can, we can talk to these people. I'll, I'll ask questions. Trust me. So you just say it to me and I'll ask some questions. That's crazy. It's just, it's been a, it's been a real, mind you, everyone's doing what they can. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. But it's just unfortunate that our children right now are falling through the cracks, especially our marginalized children. Oh, my goodness sake. It's it's terrible. You know, it's terrible. I, I don't even like that word marginalized. I know. That's, that's I know. just a, that's another a, discussion for another time. Let me give me another word to use. <laughs> Yo, you're absolutely correct. Give me another word. to use. There is no other word to use. Students, period. period. OK, students, period. Thank you. Thank you for the correction. I'll take it. No worries. Um, as you mentioned previously, a mandatory face mask. Now, um, I'll read the article. So some communities across Canada have started making non-medical face masks mandatory on public transit. TTC, in fact, they're trying to do this as of July, right? Or even businesses or indoor spaces to curb the spread of COVID-19. <laughs> Bless Sorry. you. Bless you. It's not COVID. <laughs> too soon. Is it too soon? Too soon. Way too soon. Sorry. Anyway, some doctors and um, uh, some other uh, specialists are calling for such laws to be more widespread but others warn that the potential negative impacts and say that scientific evidence isn't strong enough to warrant such heavy-handed measures. Well, it's twofold. There, there are studies out there which say, hey, listen, you know what? It helps. And there are also studies out there, in fact, actually proven cases where, in fact, no breathing studies. in your own CO2. Har it's it, waste. It's harmful. It's and, waste. And even worse. Right? But it's poisonous. It is what it is at this point. 
right? Public Health Agency of Canada, Jeez. right? They recommend that wearing non-medical masks or face covering in public spaces, especially crowded ones when physical distancing or keeping a distance of two meters from other people, mm -hmm. right, is impossible to do consistently. Such places include stores, shopping areas, public transportation, right? These are just some stores right now. Of course, we all know when regards to some stores not accepting cash right now, right? Cash shaming. Right? However, I don't even know what that is, but anyway. That's what it is. It's called cash shaming. <laughs> Jesus. Anyway. Toronto Caribbean newspaper. It's an article there. I did one yeah, on it. I, cash I, shaming. Meanwhile, can I just throw in something, please, really quick while we're on this topic? Do you know that your bank cards have more bacteria? That's research that's been done. Yes. And you guys are turning away cash? All right. Go ahead. Right? Um, some stores, in fact, there are actually a standing packed where no mask, no service. Right? Which is another, it's iffy, it's tricky. Yeah, kind of. Right? Mm -hmm. Now, the ideal that masks can reduce the spread of respiratory droplets you produce when breathing, talking, coughing, or sneezing. Right? The recommendation was put in place because of the growing evidence that people can trans transmit COVID-19 through such droplets before showing symptoms. Now, it's weird because, of course, you have the symptomatic and asymptomatic measures. By means, one day they're saying, hey, listen, no, you can't catch it this way. Another day they're saying you can't catch it that way. So, I mean, you it's... hear the one about the church, how you have, if you go to church, you can't sing. <laughs> so, people, you're telling African people Stop. <laughs> that they have to go to church and just sit there and not sing? Guys, Let's stop it. No, but I'm, you're just talking about the different things, you know. Uh -huh. was, didn't that lady, I think it was Grant who told me, that the um, health minister was like... <laughs> I have to laugh when I say this because I just think it sounds so asinine. So if you yell, you, you be out in, pro, in the protest, but just don't yell because then you ill. And wear, a mask. and wear a mask, but just don't yell. Very important that you don't yell or sing. Wow. It's not contract. Oh, wow. Coronavirus. So there are, there's a national group and actually healthcare professionals called Mask for Canada. And also a group in Quebec have recently called for more laws making masks mandatory in certain circumstances. Mm -hmm. This is, in fact, an open letter which has excess amount of doctors who have signed this letter, actually stamped their name behind this letter asking for masks to become mandatory. Right? Um, I do have a link for it. I am going to go ahead and post the link. In the comments. In our, in our comic section, yeah, our right? Comments. So that way, of course, everybody can go ahead and actually go see this, right? They're asking for all level of governments to go ahead and implement these measures for, right? And they use the acronym ACT at ACT, right? A for all indoor spaces outside the home, such as school, libraries, community centers, stores, and restaurants. Okay. C for crowded areas, both indoors and outdoors, including protests, parks, right? And trails. And of course, the T for public transit, right? So, I mean, it's, I don't know, people. I mean, I, you can see in regards to, of course, the whole lockdown, in regards to where our civil liberties, right, are at play, right? And then... You must breathe in your own waste. Do you understand? That's what they're telling you to do. Breathe it in. People, oh, have, girls, people have been, I've seen two or three different stories where people have gotten sick wearing these masks. Yes, I've heard doctors say that as well. Sick. Yes. You're getting sick. Uh -huh. It's poisoning you. Compromises. You're... It compromises your system. Right. So oh, by boy. means, um, for those out there who understand civil rights, civil liberties, by means, it, it, we, we ask you guys to, to come to the forefront because right now, these things are affecting all of us on a widespread. It isn't just a cultural thing. It's everybody. Everybody. So we're asking everybody who understands your civil rights and liberties who want to speak up on this. All right, guys, so we have one more segment again. Definitely, we want your comments in here. We're going to get these references to you guys at the end of the show, at the end of the live. Please, even if you just joined in now, go back and watch the beginning of this. We have some, there's some information, gems that we dropped in here that we need to look into a little bit more, especially the chip thing and this mask thing. And there's a lot going on. And Jemima, yeah, all that. So when we come back, we're going to be looking at a debate on racism by yes. the UN. Yes. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And we're going to give a, like, Nice ending to it, because I like nice endings. See butterflies, how they're flying? Juneteenth. Today's June 19th, so it's yes. Juneteenth Freedom Day. Mm -hmm. So we'll talk a little bit more about that when we see you in the next segment of A Better Tomorrow.
we're back. We're back. Sorry, I'm just sharing. I'm sharing. Or are you? I'm sharing. I'm sharing. I'm, I'm trying to get it out there. You okay. know? There you go. It's important information. Yes, yes. Welcome back, guys. Welcome back. It's our last and final segment of the day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Yeah. Thank you, everybody who's been tuning in this far. Appreciate you guys. Yeah, for sure. And by means, you know what? Um, keep the suggestions coming, please. Yeah, thank you guys. For everyone right. who sent in stuff this week, we please. appreciate yes, you. Definitely. If you didn't hear the stuff this week, doesn't matter. Keep sending it because you may hear it next week. We get a lot of stuff. Like, mm-hmm. my email box is on pipe right now. Is that, is that even a saying? Yeah. I think I, I just made that You up. just made it up. <laughs> so, we'll, we'll just leave that. Okay, right. wow. Yeah. Go ahead. Tell us what's happening with the UN now. All right, so... I received an interesting article with respect to all 54 nations, African nations across the continent are demanding an urgent debate from the United Nations regarding racism. Now the request was made by the nations on Friday in a letter they all signed and addressed to the Rights Council President Elizabeth Tichy uh, Fesselberger, demanding that the United Nations Human Rights Council initiate an urgent debate on racism and police brutalities following the George Floyd incident. The African group is demanding that the continent, uh, excuse me, the content of the debate to center on racially inspired human rights violations, police brutalities against people of African descent, and the violence against peaceful protests that call for these injustices to stop. Now, on one hand, I'm happy that they're going, they're finally saying something, right? But what took you guys so long? (laughs) That seems to be the running theme question. It's like, wh- what is it about, uh, what is it about this George Floyd that, that has that has everyone? Right. And and why is this, this here? There's a couple questions that I think people need to look at when mm-hmm. we're talking about this. Why why George Floyd? And and I'm not in any way saying his death wasn't wasn't terrible because clearly anyone watching could say that. Mm-hmm. But I will say this. Um, <laughs> Back in the days, our what happened to our men was a lot worse than this. Man. People were getting pulled apart by horses and stuff. It was terrible. So all of this now, people, like, what is happening? What are we not seeing? What are we missing? You know, on one hand, you know, like I said, I mean, it's great that you finally come out and say something. Because, I mean, after all these years of our people suffering. Suffering. Right? And not a statement. Nothing. Right? I mean, again, of course, I don't know the politics behind, of politics. course. Politics. That, too. Right? I don't know the policy in regards to keeping silent on measures like this. Right? However, though, our people would feel better right? if you guys would have said something a long time ago. Right? It's, it's beautiful, that, of course, that Ghana has made their nation open to have Americans. By, by means, of course, yes, we are in the Americas, so Canadians don't feel no way. Mm-hmm. Right? Even if they haven't mentioned us as of yet. Right? <laughs> However... Sounds like you're in your feelings. No, I'm, I'm not in my feelings. <laughs> right? What I'm, stating, what like I'm stating is the obvious. Right? Every day there's something, African Americans, if you don't feel welcome, please come home, right? We're just asking, hey, you know what? If you are gonna say something, yes, continue to say something. And don't just say something, let's go ahead and do something, right? There's another article which I read before that, hey, listen, you know what? It's great that you guys can finally come together and say something regarding the racial, you know, racial problems, right? Proof brutality and so on and so forth. However, though, in our own backyard, we still can't even get it together. We have borders imposed in regards to, of course, the Brussels of Berlin Conference, which are still there, mm. right? Just a while ago, Kenya and his neighbors were fighting over, of course, border control. It doesn't make any sense, considering that, hey, those borders weren't even implemented by us in the first place, right? Take so, it there, yes. By means, you know, like I said, I'm all for it in regards to, of course, everybody finally coming together, right? But hey, listen, man, don't forget us. Mm. Don't when you say us, you mean? Us, every last one of us. African diaspora. Yes, it, every, every last one of us. Okay. They consider us to be the sixth region. So by means, they include us in the discussions. Dave, got, Dave, you, you. Wow. Your next one. Wow, guys. I have never seen so much passion for you. That's, wow. Go ahead. Okay, so <laughs> if you have any comments about that, definitely leave them <laughs> in the comment box below. But you read, no, honestly, I'm glad you shared that because these are things, again, that we need to be elevating our level of discussion and going deeper into things and not staying so shallow. Like, yay, we got an apology. It's not doing anything for us. It's not lining our pockets with shit. So that doesn't help. All right. Don't laugh at me. Um, So we do have, we want to end it in a nice way. And we want to celebrate, um, I guess you'd say, our emancipation. So I have a quick, 
video to remind us what this day is about, June 19th. Juneteenth is a deeply emotional moment for enslaved people because for decades, for, for centuries, enslaved people prayed for, hoped for, fought for in the form of slave rebellions, running away, bought their freedom when they could. And if you read slave narratives, if you listen to spirituals from the era of slavery, you know that enslaved people longed for freedom. This was something that I had been hoped for, but many believe may never come. Happy Juneteenth. Yes. Yay. Yes. Happy, Juneteenth. Happy Juneteenth, everybody. It's exciting. It's a good, you know, it's... It's good history. It's good history. Mm -hmm. You know, they physically freed us. <laughs> Refinement, again. Refining. We're back. To, do, the, do the four, please. E-M-E-R, the first four letters in emergency. So in emancipation, what, where were we there out of the four letters? Well, see, the way it says is this, right? There are two methods of application, right? Which is deceit or lies, right? And violence. Refinement now is, of course, the act of not being so violent, mm. right? But of course, using your words in such a way that I hate it. Rhetoric. It, it sounds good. It very sounds good, mm. right? And it's, it's so deep that you're going to have some of my leaders, right? To say this is the best thing that we could get. Even how you said that, <laughs> it's crazy. The best that we can get. Yes. Go back and watch the minstrel video, by the way, just on that note. Okay, so every year on June 19th, Juneteenth commemorates, sorry, the end of slavery in the United States in 1865. So Juneteenth is also referred to as Emancipation Day or Freedom Day. So we leave this up for a second because I actually want to tell you guys about some of the stuff that's happening around the Americas, mm -hmm. okay, to celebrate Juneteenth. Mm -hmm. So this one here, hold on, let me see which one, hold on, hold on. This is a gala. Mm, I want to go here. So this is in Hartford, Connecticut tonight. Nice. They're ha at the Amistad Center for Arts and, and Culture. Their 2020th Juneteenth virtual gala is set for tonight, and participants can groove to jazz and R&B. Um, saxophonist David Davy is going to be there, um, and they're actually going to join for a virtual toast to mark the 155th Juneteenth with a signature Juneteenth cocktail. I want to know what a Juneteenth cocktail is. It sounds good. I'm sure we'll find out next week. Yeah, um, yeah, we'll we'll know or tonight if we wa if we log on tonight. Jutini. Yeah. There you go. Okay. So in Fort Worth, Texas, um, and that's going to be for two days, they're doing their annual Juneteenth celebration. Of course, this year, everybody's going virtual. It's just the way it is right now. So they're actually going to be streaming several events online. Um, also, a performance of the Juneteenth, the stage play. So they're going to be doing virtual concerts and actual virtual plays. So that one sounds okay. kind of cool, All right. right? That's a that's a little spin on the virtual take, right? Mm -hmm. And then uh, let's bring it let's bring it back to Toronto. So as we speak, ending actually right now, um, at one eleven Wellesley Street, they had an anti-racism rally for Juneteenth. Okay. Okay. It was from nine a.m. until two o'clock. Um, the, the, it was a moment for them to start to really consider some of the policy changes that need to happen. So they were marching for, for that reason, mm -hmm. to really about policy and anti-black racism, systemic racism. So they decided to do it this way. Okay. So there's some people out there not going virtual. And then Black Vancouver. Nice. So um, Black Vancouver is hosting a Juneteenth march today in solidarity with continued demonstrations being held across the continent and around the world. The event is set to start tonight at, or this afternoon at Jack Pool Plaza at 4 o'clock p.m. And then for my music lovers, there's going to be another Versus Challenge. Okay. Tonight, to commemorate Juneteenth, we have Alicia Keys. Do the drum roll, please. Uh... It's too late. He already put the picture up. Oh, okay, cool. 
John. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for following the Thank script. Thank you for following friend. the script. <laughs> John Legend. So that's supposed to start at 8 p.m. tonight. So, Dave, who do you think? John Legend, Alicia Keys. Truthfully, um, it, it should be a good one regardless. Um, they both have hits. They both, of course, can. Uh, I, me personally, I think Alicia Keys, Alicia Keys is, is, taking is definitely it. on another level. Yeah, 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 yeah. By means, <laughs> what do I know? Who knows? He may come out hard tonight, so right. we'll see. All right. Um, one shout out uh, first before we leave the Wellness uh, Collective. The Well, yeah, Wellness Collective. By means, or the Well Collective. Sorry, I apologize. They have a, an actual virtual event Monday. To, of course, the, the ongoing discussions regarding racism. You won't hear me saying anti-black racism for the fact that it started against us. So I'm not doing that. However, though, by means, check them out. Uh, their uh, Instagram is the Well Collective T.O. You can find more details about it this coming Monday. You know what you should do a show? Before we go, you know what you should do a show on, Dave? Or not a show, just do a lecture on? Words. And the words that we use and, and, and why we shouldn't use them. Because you do the certain words that Dave will not say. And if I say it, but he has good reason. For example, the word con. We've yeah. talked about this. Yes. No con, con nothing. Mm -mm. When you look at that, that prefix, the word con yes. is, is not a good word. Mm -mm, not at all. So you should do a little bit of it. I think you should do that because you just said anti. You, have, you don't like anti-black. You don't like using that. I won't use it. He won't use it. It, so started, it started against us in the, in the first place. So for that reason, I'll, I'll say racism, right? Anti-racism, no problem. But as far as anti-black racism... You're not saying that. No, because it started against us in the first place. Okay, got it. Wow. See all that good energy there, Dave. You're powerful today. Guys, thank you for tuning in to A Better Tomorrow. We're actually going to change our time up. We're going to do 1 o'clock. We're going to start at 1 o'clock starting next week. Again, keep watching TCN. We are evolving. We're going to start having more new shows on, more new per news personnels. We have a great group of people that we're working with at Toronto Caribbean Newspaper. And we want to get everyone involved. And it's going to be slowly happening. We're kind of just kind of, you know, being the trailblazers, being the pioneers. We're kind of just setting the course. And the people will follow us and, you know, grow, grow their, grow, I got to go, grow their wings <laughs> like the butterflies. Don't forget Guys. to hit us up. Um, by means, email us your comments, your stories. stories. please. We would definitely want to hear from all y'all. Have a wonderful guy. Happy Juneteenth. Happy Juneteenth. To everybody. Peace and love. Keep Peace fighting a good love. fight, everybody. We'll see you guys next week on A Better Tomorrow.